Hey everyone, welcome back to the Movie Couple channel. I'm Wendy and here is my review for Kung Fu Panda 4. After three death-defying adventures defeating world-class villains with his unmatched courage and martial arts skills, Po, the Dragon Warrior, has now been tapped to become the spiritual leader of the Valley of Peace. But first, he must find and train a new Dragon Warrior. Meanwhile, a wicked and powerful sorceress, Chameleon, has set her eyes on Poe's Staff of Wisdom, which would give her the power to resummon all the master villains Poe has vanquished to the spirit realm. It's been a while since I've seen a Kung Fu Panda film. The last one, the third installment, came out in 2016. We're now in 2024 and it's finally coming out in theaters. I feel like because there was such a long time in between the third and the fourth, um, I've forgotten how fun this franchise is and how much I missed Poe and his friends and just the story. But in this one, it's a little bit different. We don't have the full cast from the previous film in this one, we, and we have a ton of new characters. I mean, I guess not everybody is new. Ping is back, Lee is back, Master Shifu is back, and new characters including Zen, voiced by Aquafina, Chameleon, voiced by Viola Davis, and Han, voiced by Kihi Kwang. This movie, this franchise is really good about setting everything up and putting you right back, transporting you right back into that world without missing a beat. And it can be years, which in my case, that was, the, that was, you know, it's been forever since I've seen Kung Fu Panda 3 and I was slightly worried, like, should I have rewatched Kung Fu Panda 3 before going to Kung Fu Panda 4? Not necessary. If you've seen all of them at some point in time and you have an understanding of the characters, who they are, and their relationship with each other, you're good to go. And even if you aren't, the movie does a really quick, a, a really good job of introducing the character, sort of reintroducing, but not having to go on a very long exposition scene. They kind of say it, here's the relationship, established it, and we're moving on so we can tell the story. And I don't know if it's because it's been forever since I've seen the last one, but the animation is so good. Like the detail of you know, everybody's like fur, the way they moved with their bodies as they do their martial arts. The fight scenes were spectacularly fun. I mean, they always have been, but it's so much fun to watch. So in this one, it's a little bit different. Poe is still our dragon warrior, but now he is being essentially promoted to the spiritual leader of the Valley of Peace. And I like that with Poe, who is so happy as, you know, being the dragon warrior, his kicking butt, taking names, He's getting used to the fame. He's very popular. Um, and now he's thinking, if I have to be spiritual leader, am I, am I good enough for that? He's, so he's got his hesitation. One of like, am I good enough to do this? He doesn't really trust himself to do this. And also, he doesn't really want to let go of the dragon warrior life. And while he's worrying about that, he's got a bigger problem. There's this evil sorceress, uh, the chameleon, who can shapeshift into all these different, essentially anyone. And she wants the staff of wisdom. So there is a lot happening in this, but the way they pace the movie, it works so well. They set up with, you know, um, for Poe, his own personal obstacle, the movie obstacle, and then they bring everything together in the end. And I'm just so impressed that they were able to fit all of this in 90 minutes, just a little over 90 minutes. So like I said earlier, Jen is played by Aquafina. She is a fox and she is with Poe a lot on his adventure with the, with, you know, help uh, defeating this evil sorceress. And I just love the dynamic between Jack Black and Aquafina. They're, they both have um, a strong comedic background. The quick wit of back and forth is a lot of fun to watch. I wonder if a lot of it was perhaps improvised. Um, I did hear or read somewhere that they got to record in the booth together, which is um, nowadays I think kind of rare uh, because for animation, a lot of times it's, you know, like solo recording sessions and they just show up and the producer or directors feed them the line and then they just say it back in a variation of, of ways. So having these two characters, um, getting to record, the two actors record together, I think it also helped build that chemistry between these two characters because they were so fun to watch. And even though I like Jen a lot and I think she's a great addition to the movie, very likable, um, I actually think my favorite character is the chameleon voiced by Viola Davis. I think villains are fun. I think Viola Davis did a really good job playing this villain because, and because this film is, you know, target audience is a little bit younger. So there's a lot of, she can't be too scary, but she is scary 
enough where you're like, oh my gosh, she's so evil, but not so to the point where kids are gonna cry, I don't think. And they still made space for her to have these really funny moments. And I think Viola Davis did a really good job delivering those lines. In parts, in the beginning, when she first entered the scene, I, I was thinking, oh, okay, this sounds like her. Um, and just a few moments later, you spend a few moments with her, she disappears into the role and I stopped hearing Viola Davis and I was only hearing the chameleon, which I love. Also her character design is so cool looking, like even her outfit and everything, she's got these like super cool structured pointed like shoulder guards and she's got a, a headgear that kind of like, it kind of not shape shift, but it grows as she shifts to and from a certain, like, let's say she shifts into a tiger and then she shifts back into herself, her like headpiece sets back in place. It was just really cool to watch. I just had so much fun with this movie. It really made me miss, like I didn't realize I missed Kung Fu Panda, the franchise, until I sat down and saw this movie. And of course, because it's targeted towards younger audience, it's lighthearted. It's got enough like emotional moments to be like, oh, okay, and then, you know, the messaging of do the right thing, be true to yourself. But there's also plenty of laughs in this movie. Like my entire theater was, we were cracking up the whole time. I had so much fun. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and give you my rating for Kung Fu Panda 4. The movie couple rating scale is a little bit different, so it's listed for you in the video description below. Look, I've already said it. I, I, this made me miss the franchise. I had so much fun. Now I wanna, when this comes out, um, like for home release or whatever, I want to do like a marathon night of just like Kung Fu Panda 1 through 4. I think that'd be a lot of fun to watch. Animation is great. Fighting is excellent. A lot of fun. I, I know it's been years since the third one. So I think there's definitely, you know, technology and, and just art form in general has like really progressed in advance. And you can see that they're using all these things in it. I think Jack Black and Aquafina make a great team. Love Viola Davis as the villain in this. And then, okay, I have to say also, and I know it's called Kung Fu Panda, but food is also so important in Kung Fu Panda. And I just, they've always made food look super good in all of these Kung Fu Panda films, and this one is no exception. So um, go in, either have eaten or have plans to eat afterwards, because I think you're gonna probably crave some dumplings at the end. My rating for Kung Fu Panda 4 is check it out. And there you have it. That is my thoughts on the movie. Let me know your thoughts on the movie once you've seen it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss another movie review from us, and we will see you soon.